something not right with my medium chagoy so um, they're not flashing none of them but he's like sanding at the bottom of the on the floor he's very slow he's not acting like normal so of course it's difficult because at this time of the year <laughs> they're all slow uh, so it's a matter of knowing the behavior of your fish and knowing when one of them is not quite right <laughs> temperatures and uh, that's normally when the parasites are like hello so uh, I decided to take four scrapes on him uh, two scrapes on the shore two scrapes on the saragoy Can't believe it. Well, there you go. Ten minutes, and on the sixth live, I finally found something. Not ideal this time of the year with the temperature. Let me show you. So there you go. Definitely skin flux. You can clearly see the hooks within the belly, which means that this fluke is carrying a fluke. So these are skin flux because they carry a baby and not eggs like the gill flux. You can clearly see right in the middle there the hooks of their baby. Urgh, they are monsters. So that shows that, you know, despite having a roof, the easy pod is being cleaned three times a week. They multibay three times a week on the first chamber and the entire multibay once a week. And despite that, you get an attack of flukes. So all that because I was looking at, uh, at the Chagoy, I was just feeding them and I thought the Chagoy is being really, um, oops, sorry, it's being really lethargic, swimming about but not coming up like he would normally come up, so no flicking or anything, but there you go, no flashing, just observation when you start knowing your, your, your Koi, you know what they're doing. You know if they don't act normally or you can really really see the first one you really you can see the baby inside his belly so there you go so as I said just by observation uh, no flashing nothing but I thought he's a bit more quiet than normally is he's quiet I wouldn't say friendly because he's just <laughs> hungry but um, you can see the hooks on the in the belly of the second one as well. And there you go. Err, not ideal. Temperatures in the pond are eleven. There you go. So I wanted to show you the difference between a gill fluke and a skin fluke. So on the right, you've got the gill fluke, which is carrying eggs in their belly and then laying eggs, which are then going to hatch on your koi. 
where on the left you've got the skin flux with the sac and within the sac you can clearly see the hooks of the baby and those are going to give birth to live babies. The two flux that you can have on koi on the right side the gill flux which I had uh, back in June or July and on the left side the skin flux which I've got right now you can clearly see the difference between the two. Pushing my uh, research a little bit further I wanted to show you two pictures that I've taken again uh, this year. On the right side you still have the, the gill fluke and on the left side you've got the skin fluke. And I wanted to talk to you about the anatomy of the flukes. So I really thought that uh, the, where the hook is, the anchor, was actually the mouth of the flukes. But it's actually not. It's where the foot is and this is what's going to stick to your, uh, to your koi um, on the gill or on the skin. So the head is actually at the opposite end. Um, then you've got the mouth, then you've got the eyes, then you've got the gonopore, which is the, um, the genital uh, pore, then you've got the stomach, and then you've got the uterus. So in order to prepare for the, uh, for the product, what I've done is I've cleaned my filters as I do every single week, okay? But I will do a video about how I clean my filters. So, but what I've done is I've removed here the big brush. Here I've removed the jap mat on the top. Here I've removed every single jap mat that is in between the bags of uh, Alpha Grog. This I've rinsed it properly, but you know, what I've done in here you probably can't see it now yes you can see it um remember i've got that cage to be able to go to the bug filter so what i've done is i've put the cap right here in the outlet to go to the bug filter and i've isolated the uh the bug filter i don't want the project right now to go to the um to the um bug filter so that is switched off so those are the jab mat that were in the uh, in my uh, multi bay. Uh, you can see they're not really dirty even after a week, but uh, they are going in the bin, straight to the bin. I am not keeping them. I don't want any residue, any risk of contamination. Um, I've got more jab mats, so I will put some brand new ones um, when all the treatment is fully finished. What I've also done is, uh, at the moment, the level of the water is very, very low because I've hoovered the pond completely. Okay, it is recommended that you, for any product, uh, or every now and again, you can hoover your, your pond. Mine is absolutely clean, but at the bottom of this pipe, every now and again, I've got some residue. So what I've done is I've hoovered that, and I've hoovered at every single corner. Um, so the level of here is very, very low, but I'm just going to top it up. So I'm stopping the skimmer because for any powder product, you absolutely need to stop your skimmer. Nope, I'm not here to buy another fish. I'm here to buy something else. Couldn't help it. I had to come and see them. Here's my baby. Right, I need to go home. So flux being worms, it's always best to use a uh, worm-based product to treat the koi. Um, and there are two main ingredients which you've heard about, which is the praziquantel or prazi, which is normally a white powder, actually horrid to mix, or the flubenzenol medication, which is a worm often used in pig farming and chicken farming. Uh, but we also use it for koi such as a Fluke M. 
Your choice of product will depend uh, entirely on the water temperature and the resistance of flukes. I heard, however, that Prazi um, has become known to be less effective than Fluke M. I also hear that in Europe they began to dose um, close to three times the recommended dose for Prazi for it to work. So with flukes being more resistant to our product, it's no surprise that uh, they've decided to make a new product, which is Fluxolve Plus, which contains Praziquantel and Nitroscanate, um, but also the Learnix Pro, which is uh, Flubenzenol and Nitroscanate. Um, quite harsh for the koi, it can result in small burns in patches in some areas. So you've got to be very careful with those two uh, products. So for this you need to put hot water, so not boiling water, but... So the air is still in the pond, okay, and the product is gradually going inside the pond. You can probably see that the water um, is starting to cloud and fairly shortly I should start seeing the fish flashing unfortunately because the product is going to start irritating them or oh, irritating the um, the flukes, should I say, and then obviously annoying the fish. So now it's just a matter of waiting until the bucket empties and keeping an eye on them. So I've stopped the pump here for the uh, skimmer and now I've stopped the pump for the um, for all the filtration systems. So just the air carries on in here but I stop all filtration system for a minimum of six hours so this allows the product to really go into the into the fish the most important thing to understand about flukes or any other parasites for that matter is their life cycle um, the gill flukes are egg layers uh, and in my opinion, in my opinion, they are the most problematic because they directly attack the gills and they can also live on the body of our fish. But they attack ferociously the, the gills and it's very damaging uh, and their recovery time is much longer. And, but this time I've got skin flukes uh, and they are live bearers, which is a little bit better in a way. Uh, it's just really bad timing with the... Uh, with the temperature but it is what it is uh, I'm not heated and I'm still gonna have to deal with it the problem with flukes obviously is that it comes hand in hand with uh, other parasites um, like 
generally cost your trichodina um, and that's exactly what happened to me last time uh, after flux I had trichodina um, the, the costia live actually in the guts of the of the fish so when you do a worm based treatment then the fish release the costia and then you have an attack of costia so now we'll stop feeding for the first 24 hours to help the load on, on, on the filters and the flux as I said can also live inside the the um, the fish so after the treatment hopefully that's going to dislodge them and then after 24 hours I start feeding them again and that will hopefully dislodge them even more in their guts so because the powder is uh, you can see over there sort of floating what, I've also, what I do is um, I put a pump at the bottom of the pond here and through the hose this is just pond water. I'm just pushing it down. Okay. And this is just, as I said, pond water. The pump is uh, attached to that hose. So you can see that the water is very, very cloudy now. So the product has really mixed in the water. Um, I haven't really seen any fish flashing so far. Not even the um, the doits, the two doits. But it's definitely in. It's going to stay like that for six hours. And let the product, as I said, really attack the uh, really attack the uh, the flukes and not go into the filter system straight away so a lot of people who've got drums when they use this kind of product powder product they bypass the uh, filter system you know their drum for about for you know for six hours twelve hours um, all you've got to do is leave the air on but, um, I don't want obviously any product to uh, to be caught in the filters at the moment right? I really want them to uh, to soak in it the first 24 hours are critical um, in, in any treatment so this is my way of doing it <laughs> so here we are two days later it's freezing it's pitch black but uh, like every day uh, I've been here several times a day but I just want to check one more time um, before putting it a day. So the most difficult for me is not to clean the filters. Um, as you can see the water is really really clear and they've barely eaten anyway so there's just that amount of waste at the bottom. Um, but yeah, not cleaning the filters is a bit of a hard one for me. I'm really a little bit uh, probably obsessive with it. but. Let's have a look at the fish. So they are right there at the bottom. Hmm. None of them are flashing. But they seem to be okay. Uh, the water is at 9 degrees. Um, Sarago is still coming up every now and again. But they seem okay, so that's the main thing. And I've just got to go with um, with what they need, what they need, what they want. So I will do another treatment in six days' time, and then I will scrape again. And if another treatment is required then I will uh, and I will do then a change of uh, product I will then go with, with the uh, price point here um, just you know to uh, to use both products so there you go this is where we are oh there you go Leo flash
temperatures at nine degrees not ideal really not ideal for any treatment and one product that is very really good at low temperature is the fluke solve so i might go for that next time so there you go generally happy with how the fish seem to be uh, they're not overly flashing it's actually the first time in two days that i see one flashing uh, but I only come here for half an hour, an hour sometimes. Uh, but there you go, that's where we are. So I'll catch you next week. Bye for now.